welcome to the show. I'll just let this guy go behind me. Um, today we're going to be looking at a very unique car. It's actually a car very close to my heart. This is my own personal everyday car. And uh, I've been told that I'm slightly crazy for actually owning her, but she is a 1964 Fiat 500D. She's actually quite a rare model. And um, this one in particular used to be a prize for uh, Telecom many, uh, many moons ago, and I acquired her because the uh, previous owner couldn't actually look after her anymore in the uh, Christchurch earthquake. So that was a bit of a shame for them, but obviously fantastic for me. So, a little bit about the car. Well, this one's uh, electric blue with uh, yellow flames on the front. She's got a private number plate, Ignite. And the whole idea for me was she ignited my passion. I've been looking for a Fiat Bambina for many years. When I was a child, I used to actually photograph them when I was uh, living in Europe. I used to go and find them. And the last time I went on a European holiday, I actually uh, I tried to get them in a, as many different colors as I could so I could actually do the national flags of the countries that I found them in. So obviously in Italy, I'd find a, a, a red, a white, and a green Bambina in France, a, a blue and a red one to be able to actually uh, complement my colors. And that was uh, pretty much what started my fascination for Bambinas all those years ago. So, the Bambina itself, um, she's less than half a ton, so it makes it very light, which means that they can get a lot of grunt out of the, uh, the 20 brake horsepower that this car has. That's right, you can almost imagine the whole 20 horses galloping along the side of this thing and actually keeping up. But because she's so light, she actually is really nimble on her feet. And um, she's got a very short gait between all of the gears. And actually you'll hear probably on the uh, audio here, when, when she actually changes gear, you get a, a real reassuring clunk. Um, the thing with the Bambina was the, um, the synchro mesh wasn't added until the very last years. And in fact, that was one of the upgrades that was given to it when it was finally replaced by the Fiat 127, uh, sorry, 126, I beg your pardon. The Fiat Bambina itself, um, I suppose is one of those, the original super minis. The great thing about this car, I guess, is you're not really trying to make up for, for uh, I don't know, any macho kind of status. It's such a fun little car. It can be driven by men. It can equally be driven by women. Um, and because she's so light and nimble, she's actually quite fun to drive. Um, the steering is not super responsive, but obviously you're comparing that to a modern car. But one of the luxuries I like is this really thin steering wheel actually connects you to the really thin uh, uh, wheelbase that you actually get and you, you can actually feel yourself turning corners and you feel quite connected to the car. Now one of the beautiful things about this car is the suicide doors. Um, so called suicide because if you open them at any speed there is actually a, uh, a physical uh, reaction with the wind and what happens is as the, the wind is actually going over the car and around the car in this case when it finds the loose edge of the door it actually will whip it back and unfortunately i've had that experience at uh, less than 20 k's and uh, watch the <laughs> watch the door literally always fall off its hinges uh, so you can imagine what it would have happened if it actually happened at uh, the car's top speed of around 85 k's in case you've not heard it the bambino itself was actually uh, christened by a new zealander uh, Torino Mont uh, Motors up in Auckland actually uh, christened the name Bambina and even though that was actually uh, specifically only for one model, the, uh, the 500L which was one of the later models in its lifetime, it's actually stuck and it's stuck throughout the, uh, the years and, and now everybody knows that this Bambi or Bambina is, uh, is I suppose quintessentially the, the 60s car of Italy or certainly if you're around in Europe it was the 60s car that many people chose. So she's, um, she's a rear engine car, um, the uh, Italians made no bones about borrowing a lot of the ideas that came out of post-war Germany and in particular how the Germans were developing the, uh, the Beetle to be the people's car. And in uh, Italy, um, as with everything, uh, there's, there's quite a lot of uh, emphasis on uh, small, uh, small being beautiful in this case and that's simply because of the nature of Italy as a, as a country, it's got very many thin windy little roads and surprisingly even with such small horsepower the little car actually gets up and down the Wellington Hills very well. I mean I use her every day and uh, don't really have too much worry about uh, uh, my fuel economy that's very good uh, but more importantly she can park anywhere she can do a, a one-point turn on almost any road you can actually uh, find in Wellington and some of the bigger roads obviously you can imagine I can do donuts. The other beauty about this car is of course there's no radio windows, there's the roof. Basically that's one of the charms of it. Every time you stop at a set of traffic lights, you look at these people looking and everybody seems to smile when they look at the car. Oh, the boys turned around and having a good old look. 
but where you park her, when you leave her anywhere, um, she enjoys the crowd. And I bought the car deliberately for that experience. And it's actually quite a nice uh, a daily routine of driving around, buying a coffee and seeing people smiling and waving at her. Um, she's actually very funny when you beat the horn. So this one is such, such a lovely little horn. So she's, uh, she's rear wheel drive, she's got the engine at the back, uh, that's a, um, a two-cylinder air-cooled engine, which is again one of the ideas that it borrows from uh, the Beetle. And like the Beetle, the uh, the luggage space is actually up the front of the car. I say luggage space. I, I think uh, if laptops had been around in uh, in Italy in the 60s when this was uh, conceived, that probably would have been a more ample description of the luggage space that you actually get. Now in the 500D, which I've got, this actually had the smaller gas tank of the two. Um, and this gas tank takes about $22 to fill up at the moment. And I get about, oh, uh, I think the last time I checked, I was getting about 250, maybe nearly 300 Ks out of it, depending on what kind of motoring is actually doing. It's a laptop, <laughs> really, isn't it? Oh. A laptop, maybe maybe a set of uh, set of shoes and you haven't got much else. That's it, middle thing. That? Yeah. That's the actual, that's how you jack her up. That's the, that's the original jack. Oh, wow. Yeah. And, um, yeah, no, she's good. She's good, Nick. She's, uh, oh, I've got a smile on her, for sure. But um, you can see what I mean about her being tiny. Hi, everybody. Well, as you can see, I've got a, a beauty there, but the great thing with uh, with classics is they often get redone. And you know, I'm here today with the, the current version of the Fiat 500. Uh, been on sale since about 2007, this car, but I have to say that I'm not personally too much of a fan of them. I mean, I, I like the overall homage it plays to the old car, I like the, the roundedness, I like the, the lights, but in simple terms, everything's changed. One of the things about this which made it a classic was its the little nuances, the, the dials, the switches, the fact that everything was very small and very light, as you can see in here. We've got a very chunky steering wheel these days, very different to the one that I have in the actual car itself, which is thin and very easy to manoeuvre. We've got everything you expect in a modern car. We've got leather seats, we've got uh, electric trim, and we've got a nice little punchy gearbox. This one's actually got a five-speed, but the R-Bath itself actually has a six-speed gearbox mm -hmm. these days. And as you can imagine, that gives you quite a lot of grunt, especially in the lower rev range. As you can see, we've got a boot. My gosh, a boot. Now, you don't have that, of course, in the original. But we have to be remember here that we're updating a classic. And in modern society, you need to be able to put your shopping somewhere. You need to be able to put your kids somewhere. And you still need to get around. In Britain, these cars are hugely popular. And that's possibly one of the reasons why I, I don't like them as much. My one turns head because she's so old, nobody sees them anymore. These ones, when you get to ubiquity, unfortunately, what you get is a little bit of blandness. Oh,